So, are you tired of boring old Earth? Want to know what lies beyond the starry night sky? You're not the only one. People have been asking the same question for centuries. Luckily, scientists have got you covered. They've discovered a lot of amazing places light years away from our blue planet. Just one light year is about 6 trillion miles. Mind blowing, huh? So, hop on! The spaceship of knowledge is lifting off. Your first stop is 2.5 billion light years away from Earth. It's a quasar, one of the brightest objects in the universe and the first one to be discovered. A quasar isn't a star, but a distant galaxy. This extremely bright object gets its power from a supermassive black hole. A disk of matter swirls around the black hole and creates friction. It's kind of like when you're cold and rub your hands together to stay warm. The friction between the palms creates heat, making you feel nice and cozy. The same happens in the quasar, just the amount of heat is bigger, way bigger. I hope you remember to pack sunscreen lotion. The temperature at the heart of this quasar can reach 18 trillion degrees Fahrenheit. Also, there is light, a lot of it. This celestial object shines a hundred times brighter than all the stars in its galaxy put together. Well, it's time to cool down a bit. Minus 457 degrees Fahrenheit, to be precise. This is the temperature of a young planetary nebula called the Boomerang Nebula. It sits 5,000 light years away from Earth. NASA's Hubble telescope caught images of the formation in 1998. It's composed of gas coming from a star near the end of its life cycle. Inside the nebula, it's windier than in the Windy City. Winds reach speeds up to 310,000 miles per hour. And you gotta thank them for the nebula's chilling temperatures. Researchers were just impressed to find out that the temperature of the Boomerang Nebula is just one degree above absolute zero. Zero Kelvin should be the coldest temperature possible. This is the point where all molecular and atomic activity stops. Brr, makes you want to crank up the thermostat in your spaceship. Next, you're going to a place you might not want to visit. Sorry. So it's the most massive black hole. This giant is located at the heart of a large galaxy, some 10.4 billion light years from our planet. Its mass is 66 billion times greater than that of the Sun. Enough to make our galaxy's supermassive black hole feel ashamed. It has a mass of merely 4.5 million times that of the Sun. But you better not get near any of them, as a black hole's diet consists of matter. By calculating how much matter they consume, scientists can determine their rate of expansion. And those black holes have quite an appetite. Astronomers believe there are stupendously large black holes, or slabs, hiding somewhere in the universe. If they're real, their mass is estimated to be greater than 100 billion times that of the Sun. Now, it's time to snack on something lighter. The spaceship enters the Kepler-51 system. It's home to the lightest planets in the known universe, called Super Puffs. Sounds fluffy enough, and it is. These planets' mass is either the same or slightly greater than that of Earth. But this doesn't mean they're small. Think of them as giant cotton candies the size of Jupiter. They are newly born planets whose atmosphere is still cooling down. You might want to wait for this process to be over, though, as 500 degrees Fahrenheit is too hot to handle. But for experts, super puffs are special. These planets are incredibly rare, as they've managed to discover less than 20 so far. Now, are you up for a race? Let's say the ship you're on is traveling at a speed of 25,000 miles per hour. This is the current human speed record. It was set by NASA's astronaut TRIO from the Apollo 10 mission in 1969. And no, I am not talking about Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin. That was the Apollo 11 mission later that year. Right now, you're going to race against a star 18,000 light-years from Earth. Your biggest advantage is that this is a neutron star. It was formed when another massive star ran out of nuclear fuel and couldn't support itself anymore. Think of a car running on an empty tank. Victory couldn't be any closer, right? Well, not quite. When a massive star feels like its time is up, it shrinks and starts spinning. Figure skaters do the same during a spin. They fold in their arms to increase rotation to the maximum. 
This neutron star is the champion of the universe. It spins at a speed of 157 million miles per hour. That's roughly 27% of the speed of light. Whoa! Are you running low on energy at this point? Time to charge up from a gamma ray burst. Gamma rays are electromagnetic waves generated by various forms of radiation. These bursts were fairly unknown to science until the late 1960s. Satellites equipped with gamma ray detectors accidentally recorded huge outbursts of radiation outside of our solar system. What were they? Nothing dark, definitely, as these are the most energetic forms of light. Scientists believe that gamma ray bursts happen when two neutron stars collide and form a black hole. The other explanation is that they are in the final stage in the life of a supernova. This event happens when a star decides to go out with a bang. Gamma ray bursts shine brighter than a diamond. They are a million trillion times brighter than the sun. Talk about an energy boost. Ah, your mood is lightened up by now. You want to visit a place that has a draw to it. No, it's not a beach resort, but a magnetar. It's a neutron star with a twist. Magnetars have a magnetic field that is a trillion times stronger than that on our planet. But don't fall for their strong appeal. Let's just say you won't live to tell a tale if you get too close to one. In 2004, a flare that came off the surface of a magnetar managed to compress Earth's magnetic field from a distance of 50,000 light years. Quite impressive for a star the size of a city. Makes you wish to team up with this oversized magnet to commit the greatest heist ever. A magnetar has the ability to swipe all the credit cards on planet Earth from a distance halfway to the moon. Luckily for humans, NASA has discovered only 31 of these stars so far. You have barely escaped the pull of a magnetar. Suddenly, you start to sense a strange force drawing you away from your home base. It is the Great Attractor, one of the biggest mysteries of the universe. This massive gravitational irregularity has been pulling us closer and closer to it for billions of years. Scientists estimate that the Great Attractor is located at the center of the Linnea Kea supercluster. The name means immeasurable heaven in Hawaiian. It represents a gigantic collection of planets, stars, and asteroids. Our home galaxy, the Milky Way, is just a speck in this enormous supercluster. According to the Big Bang Theory, not the TV show, the real theory, the universe has been expanding in all directions. But the mysterious Great Attractor is slowing things down. How exactly? Researchers still need to figure this one out. On the bright side, they are good at naming things. The end of the universe would be called the Big Crunch, if there's anyone left to call it that. Your journey, too, ends at the edge of the universe. The most distant galaxy from Earth is the oldest one as well. The galaxies that form first after the Big Bang have drifted the furthest. So every time advanced telescopes detect a far, far away dot, they give scientists an image of the origins of the universe. Whoa, the light from outside your window just got brighter. It's 9.30 in the evening, and you have a huge exam coming up tomorrow. You peek outside to see if your neighbors use their floodlights again. But they're outside looking up in the sky. You stick your head out and notice that the moon got a lot bigger, double in size. You run outside and ask people what's going on. But they don't have a clue either. You take a picture of it and post it on social media. You view your feed and see that everyone is talking about it. The dark sky is brighter because the moon has more real estate to reflect light from the sun, making the light more intense. You can feel a slight imbalance while walking. Every time you take a step, it feels like you're walking lighter than usual. Because the moon became so large, its gravitational pull became stronger, so gravity became weaker. Suddenly, you look below you and feel your socks are wet. You run and hop on the top of a car and see that there's water flooding your neighborhood. Everyone tries to find higher ground or run back to their houses. This isn't a fire hydrant that busted and is spewing out water. This is ocean water seeping in. You're confused and lose your balance. You slip and fall in the water as it rises. Some people are in their cars, but they can't drive anywhere because of the water. You live near the ocean, but there has never been a tsunami or any flood reports in your whole life. 
There are no reported earthquakes around the area, so something strange is happening. You run back to your house, trying to see if you can get out your old inflatable raft to help you with the flood. The only problem is that you need to inflate it but don't have your pump. You inflate it with your mouth at first, but it'll take forever to pump it up. You search around your house for an alternative and find your hairdryer. You plug it in and inflate the raft as much as you can until you use your mouth to do the rest. The water level rises by every second and has now entered your house. You pack up a bag with a good flashlight, some food, and thermal blankets. You go downstairs and see that the water is now at your knees. You keep walking until you reach the door. When you step outside, the water pushes you left and right since the waves are very harsh. Since gravity has changed, it's not easy to swim around. You get your raft ready and use it to float yourself down the current in your street. It doesn't help that the water is freezing, and you're in the middle of February. After a while, you reach the highway where water is coming directly from the beach. You manage to get on a high surface and take out your phone. You kept it in a protective compartment in your bag for safety. You only have 15% battery left, but you brought your power bank. You call your family to see what's going on, but they too have no idea. You venture into the forest and try to spot an old cabin you used to visit as a child to see if you left your old bicycle there. After a few minutes, you find it and bike across the mountain to escape the flood. You can't seem to balance yourself since the gravity is affecting you. Some scientists sit around with laptops and spreadsheets, attempting to understand what's happening. Everyone is shouting and throwing out random solutions, but nothing seems to make sense. After a while, the head of NASA decides to launch an unmanned rocket to the moon. The rocket is ready in a few hours, and everyone is awaiting orders. 3, 2, 1, blast off! The rocket soars in the air and approaches the moon. It exits the Earth's atmosphere and travels at full speed in that direction. After a day or two, everyone gets live footage of the giant moon. According to the studies, the rocket can't be too close to the moon since it may have a stronger gravitational pull. However, the footage shows that tiny particles are floating around it, similar to Saturn's rings. These rings look like a giant disk surrounding the large planet, but up close, they're just particles that are the size of rice grains to the extent of a large bus. They're orbiting Saturn because of the gravitational pull. The images show that these particles are big and small, which doesn't make it safe for the rocket to get any closer. So it suspends itself nearby to orbit the moon and unleashes a mini-rocket that looks like a drone to get closer. The particles are many miles thick, making it difficult for the mini-rocket to maneuver. It flies closer and the particles start crashing on it. It's a good thing that the mini-rocket is durable for this. The rocket finally gets past the particles and lands on the moon. Gravity has gotten stronger since it inflated in size, which almost broke the rocket. As soon as it lands, another robot pulls out and starts driving around the surface, trying to get some clues. As of now, nothing is happening. But they're noticing some quivers coming from deep inside the moon. The moon's core is reacting abnormally. It looks like it's getting bigger and bigger. Scientists don't know if it will stop growing at a certain point, so the only way to find out is to drill a hole deep inside to uncover the reason. You're pedaling away and reach the other side of the mountain. The ground is shaking, and your balance is getting worse. You look across the mountain and see that the whole other side of town is flooded. You get your raft and supplies and make it there. You find a rowboat and paddle as fast as you can until you reach the lighthouse. From there, you can try to find the NASA station. Suddenly, you see a large rocket erupt from the ground and into the sky. You know for a fact that your brother is there, working, but cellular networks are down. You paddle your way there for safety. The little rocket that landed unleashes a small drill strong enough to go miles to the center. It'll take days for it to reach down. So NASA is already launching another rocket to fly off and bring a bigger drill. The only problem is that the moon is getting bigger, so the particles around the moon also gather a lot more. The moon is reaching the Earth's size, getting bigger by the minute. The flood could reach several coastal states, and many micro-islands could be submerged, so it needs to be prevented. 
Gravity could affect the structure of most of the buildings, causing them to collapse one by one. But the little robot will not let that happen, so he's drilling to figure out what's going on with the moon. Some of the rocks appear to be getting hotter as it digs. This could be a sign of the moon expanding, which might ultimately explode. The scientists in the room are baffled and don't know what to do. The lead scientist, who is your brother, calls you, but he can't reach you. Meanwhile, you're still paddling around, trying to get to NASA. On your way, you head back to the mountains to stay on dry land. When you arrive back at the old cabin, you see some strange men wearing trench coats looking for you. There's a stare-off until they chase you. They seem odd, like they're not from Earth. The drill has reached its maximum depth and can't go down any longer. Also, the control transmission is getting weaker. Suddenly, a figure pops out of nowhere and flashes its lights on the robot. The transmission chops and only show little snippets of the giant figure eyeing the robot. A little creature descends from the figure and walks toward the robot. Everyone at NASA is freaking out and recording every single frame. No one can believe what's going on. After a while, the creature transmits a signal that NASA can't decipher. But the creature seems friendly. The creature gets back into its ship and in an instant disappears into thin air as it teleports away. The moon starts shrinking. It's getting back to its normal size. Everyone celebrates in NASA and around the world. The currents become calmer and retreat to the coast. It's a good thing everyone reached the higher hills before. While we may think of ourselves as advanced after catching a glimpse of the eight planets of our solar system and their 200 moons, we really have little idea of what's out there. So much so that there's speculation that there might be one more planet in our solar system. Scientists call it Planet X or Planet 9. This undiscovered world could be hidden way out past Neptune. Asteroids and dwarf planets in this area have weirdly unexplained altered orbits, and Planet X may be the reason. Tales of this mysterious planet began over a hundred years ago with a man called Percival Lowell. Lowell had a great love of space, and aside from having an impressive mustache, he was also super rich. Ooh, that lucky guy. He used his riches to build an observatory in Arizona. He then dedicated it to study the odd motions of Uranus and Neptune. Their gravitational pulls are slower than those of all the other planets in our solar system, almost as if there is a giant hidden object pulling them off course. In 1906, Lowell theorized that there could be another planet out beyond Neptune. It probably caused those strange cosmic happenings. The man called this potential space body Planet X. In 1930, Pluto was discovered by Clyde Tombaugh at Lowell's very own observatory. It finally looked like people had an explanation for the weird orbital patterns. Lowell's team was on cloud 9 after the discovery, but their celebrations were short-lived. Soon, they found out that Pluto is way too small to be having that much of an effect on the surrounding planets. And it was also too far away from them. So it was back to the drawing board. Planet X, if it exists, is 10 times the size of Earth and 4 times its radius. It would take at least 10,000 years for the planet to orbit the Sun. And it would sit over 200 times further out than our home planet. That's 600 astronomical units from the center of the solar system. FYI, an astronomical unit equals the distance between the Earth and the Sun. But while that sounds super far away, it's actually not. The distance between space bodies is usually measured in light years, and an astronomical unit is a much smaller unit of measurement. For context, the most distant thing detected from Earth is the galaxy GNZ11. Cute name, huh? It sits a staggering 32 billion light years away. Even so, our telescopes can still spot it. And just one light year is the same as 63,241 astronomical units. Woo. So, if our tech can detect a galaxy that's so far away, how have we not been able to uncover Planet X? Well, it's probably down to the fact that it might not even exist. The theory of Planet X was pretty much debunked back in 1989. 
it was discovered that the mysterious gravitational pulls of Neptune had been a red herring all along. Scientists had massively misjudged just how big Neptune actually was. Voyager 2 visited the planet and discovered its actual size. This new info explained the odd gravitational pulls, meaning they weren't being caused by the so-called Planet X. But that's not where our investigation ends, as the hypothetical ninth planet once again popped up around 10 years ago. While the evidence behind Lowell's theory was wrong, his belief in Planet X may not have been. In 2015, astronomers Michael Brown and Konstantin Batigin discovered that there were, in fact, unexplained gravitational forces at play past Neptune. There are satellites that orbit planets perpendicularly, which doesn't happen anywhere else in our solar system. There's also clusters of asteroids that move in very specific ways, so specific that it's basically impossible that it could be random. Even weirder, there are satellites that travel in completely opposite direction to the Sun, unlike most other things in the solar system. A planetoid called Sedna also appears to be being pulled towards something, along with six others, all going in the same direction. And Brown and Batigen aren't just any other stargazers. They're both well-respected scientists at the top of their game. Konstantin Batigen has been named in Forbes as one of 30 scientists who are changing the world. And Mike Brown was the man who rebranded Pluto as a dwarf planet. This means that when these guys say something, it's usually pretty legit, and you should probably listen. But the only way we can really prove Planet X exists is to actually find it, and this has turned out to be pretty difficult. To locate the planet, we'd need to use a method called transit photometry. This is basically where we monitor a whole bunch of stars for a long time and look out for any dips in the light they give off. These dips would likely be caused by a planet getting in the way. And ta-da! The existence of Planet X could be proved. But for this method to work, Earth, the new planet, and the Sun all have to be perfectly aligned. These circumstances are pretty rare, and if these conditions don't exist, the dip in light won't happen. Plus, this method would only really work with planets that are closer to the Sun than our Earth. That's Venus and Mercury. For anything past Earth, this technique is pretty much useless. Another technique we could use is to find the potential planet through a good old-fashioned telescope. But as you can imagine, that's insanely tricky. The furthest object that we found in our solar system is a planetoid, appropriately named, far, far out. But that's only 140 AU away from the Sun. That's only like a quarter of the way to Planet X. We can only see an object because of its brightness. The Sun is very visible to us because it emits huge amounts of light. And we can see the Moon because it reflects the Sun's light. Technically, the Moon has no right to appear brighter than everything else in the night sky. It only seems brighter because we're closer to it. The farther away an object is, the less bright it appears to us. The major issue with seeing the theoretical Planet X is that all objects in our solar system get their light from the Sun. They reflect sunlight, and that's why we can see them. Given how far away from the Sun Planet X might be, it makes it nearly impossible to see. And because of its really dim light, to view it, we would require perfect weather conditions as well as an extremely strong telescope. But Brown and Batigen have found the perfect one. The Subaru Telescope is located at the top of a dormant volcano in Hawaii. It's huge and is capable of capturing even the weakest light from distant space objects. The issue that we need to figure out is where to point it. Without knowing where Planet X actually is, this basically turns things into a giant guessing game. There are also only around three nights every year when the conditions are clear enough to see the hypothetical Planet X. It's difficult, but not impossible. And still, most astronomers have called it a day and agreed that Planet X doesn't exist, stating that it's just a common myth. The most widespread explanation for the weird gravitational pulls is that there's a tiny black hole in our solar system. It's pulling the planets toward us. But don't worry. They say it's not big enough to actually munch on a planet. So Earth is all good for now.
The issue with the black hole theory is that, once again, it's almost impossible for us to track the thing down. While its mass could be as great as that of Planet X, the hole itself would be squished down to the size of an orange. Telescopes wouldn't be of any use. To find it, people would have to look for the gamma rays sent off by objects as they fall into the black hole. Another way we could find it is to release hundreds of tiny spacecraft. They would pass close enough to the hypothetical hole, and when they got pulled toward it, we could probably detect it. But don't count out Brown and Batigen's theory. It's still being documented by NASA. And until we find unmistakable evidence to prove any theories, Planet X might still be out there.